when we go through 2G, 3G, and 4G, really when we talk about, hey, you know what, I have a good connection with my phone, I can get a good data rates, I have a good coverage, all of that we're really talking about in the vicinity of licensed spectrum. This means it's a spectrum that from a government and the regulatory aspects have cleaned it up, have brought it to market, and have auctioned to each of the carriers, and each carrier have exclusive rights to the spectrum and that will be responsible to guarantee the QoS for the users there. Right? So now for this type of, type of spectrum has two key characteristics. One, it is very it is high, high QoS and controlled by the carriers. And the second, it is also takes a long process to bring to market. It's kind of very precious, you know, precious value for the spectrum. And now, as we are moving to 5G, as you have seen the presentation by John and Matt, the spectrum, the bandwidth that the user will experience will be wider and wider on the order of hundreds of megahertz. So where can we really get all of this spectrum to be licensed? Well, two ways. One way is go to higher, going higher in the spectrum domain, going to the millimeter wave bands, right, where there's a lot of ample amount of spectrum available, which John has mentioned. The other way, is also now what about low bands, which today is already crowded with many different types of technology. Then we really need to make sure that we have all types of spectrum available for the 5G users to be able to be serviced. And that really brings us really to the, the other kinds of spectrum. Why is the unlicensed spectrum? Unlicensed spectrum has been around for a while being used by Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and many other technologies. And our goal is really to see how we can bring the quality, QoS, and reliability of wireless into the unlicensed spectrum to make the user experience better and also to make the spectrum usage more efficient. And the second type of spectrum that's av available out there is a shared spectrum. And this is different from unlicensed spectrum or licensed in the sense that this spectrum is relatively clean but there are pockets of legacy deployments or with high priority that must be guaranteed, such as satellite services or such as um, radars. And these ones must be protected. And once they are protected, other services can go in. And we really, our goal, part of spectrum sharing, is also to make sure we can make these bands available to consumer to be used early and so that everybody benefits. So, um, so this is basically some of the use cases. We talk about shared spectrum. Given the limitation time, I'll just go through this very quickly. The first, of course, when we freed up more unlicensed or shared spectrum to be used, then clearly you can have the carriers to aggregate more spectrum. And one example, as I will mention later, is typically today that's already happening on LTE with the LTEU and the license assisted access, LAA, that you can have a license band plus an unlicensed band for a carrier to launch the service. So that's one way, you have a wider spectrum aggregation. The second way is now, if you look into some kind of localized deployment, let's say I'm a factory owner, and I really want to light up an industry automation, and I really want a system that I can control, but really brings the reliability and the quality of cellular spectrum. For example, if I want to do robotic automations, control these automated guided vehicles, this requires a very low latency, and a very high precision. And so therefore the quality of network cannot be compromised by today's unlicensed you know, type of uh, you know, uh, stuff. So basically what we need is um, how we can really bring this type of cellular technology like LTE and 5G in this private industry and spaces to really let these service to be launched. And that's really another kind of very, very important use case, private networks. And then these localized areas, like stadium venues, can also use some um, shared spectrum or unlicensed spectrum to really offer higher quality services for data for the end user so they can benefit. Okay, so these are some of the use cases we're looking at. Now, so why do we say we have confidence that 5G NR can be a good technology for shared spectrum? Because tomorrow, normally like Peter Drucker says, tomorrow always has happened today, okay? And because today, even in LTE space, when we go into, for example, shared spectrum, which, we, which you have legacy incumbents, Qualcomm really has already partnered with industry to go into the bands in Europe, LSA bands, right, in the 2.3 gigahertz area that we have done pilot with Ericsson and RED <coughs> to really 
make sure that we can have the cellular technology to protect incumbents and yet to be able to offer good service towards the end. So that's really on the sheer spectrum. On the other hand, now on the unlicensed bands, now clearly I think we started the whole development back in 2013. When we have, uh, actually when, when we have a group of engineers in Corporandi, we're looking at one very important topic, which is really on how we can really bring carrier grade quality to Wi-Fi. That was back then. And this whole thing really fueled a lot of the IEEE development on AX today, which Qualcomm played a major role there. But at the same time, we're saying that we can enhance Wi-Fi to be more carrier grade, to be more capable, but we could also bring the quality of LTE to just to the unlicensed band, so everybody benefit. So as, so as an engineer, we ask the question, why not? So we also started the development of uh, LTEU, LTE unlicensed, and LAA, and subsequently in Multifire. The difference is really LTEU is you only bring, we do things step by step. We only bring a downlink only technology from LTE downlink only to unlicensed band. That's really LTEU. And then, uh, so all the controls and all the uplink happens on, on, the, on the licensed carrier. And LAA, we bring basically downlink and uplink into the unlicensed band, but that's where the secondary cell, and, and, the, and but the control signaling and mobility is still on the anchor carrier. And then for Multifire, we bring everything into the unlicensed band, the whole LT to operate stand alone there. So that's kind of progression that, that really has happened. And today, we really have both kind of technology now, all the LAA and the Multifire being out there to demonstrate and LAA ready for commercial. And so basically that's really how, and basically the goal is really to bring the robustness and efficiency of LTE into the unlicensed band. And then on the CBRS front in US, really we can, we have a unique opportunity to, involve, to bring both kinds of these um, sharings in, into the same space for 3.5 gigahertz here, because there you have legacy incumbents you have to protect, and yet you have a tier that will be more like a clean unlicensed spectrum. So, now, as uh, we look next into some of the merit and benefit that the user will be able to get by bringing the cellular quality of technology into the unlicensed spectrum. So I think you probably have seen, if you have seen some of our past presentations, you, have, you, you probably have seen these two pictures. So I'll just highlight them very quickly. On the left is what we did is we, so last year we actually have done a drive test in Nuremberg, um, in an in, in office in Germany really basically in comparing the coverage of LAA purely on the unlicensed carrier in five gigahertz and with, together with Wi-Fi, okay? Now, from that particular aspect in the comparison, right, you, what you can see is that really compared to Wi-Fi, which is 802.11 AC, AC, okay, you see that really over the different regions of coverage you're interested, you really get about 2x coverage from basically using the LTE-based technology in the unlicensed comparing to um, 802.11 AC, okay? And uh, now, so that was the drive, drive test then. Now today, just last night, I have seen a press release that the Vodafone has launched an LAA commercial sites in Turkey, and basically with infra from Huawei, and basically with a device from Qualcomm. So I think this is the first announcement that happened for LA, and we're expecting more to come now in this year. So we're bringing a technology from a concept and trial now really to, to commercial reality. So that's really on LA. And on the right, what you see is really a performance evaluation of a technology by Multifire, which is really LTE unlicensed, operate standalone in the unlicensed band. And there again, by comparing with 802.11 AC in a very dense, indoor environment like this. We have really an indoor environment with eight different access points, four access points with carrier one, another, another access, four access points for, for operator two. In that environment, we see that the, 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 the median, the throughput gain the user get would also be significantly like two, between two to three X compared to 802.11 AC. And later on today, you're gonna see a demo for, for Multifire also in the afternoon. Now, here, I'm not trying to say that really we are trying to replace Wi-Fi. One thing that's very important to note is that all the enhancement and experiments and observations we have done on LT unlicensed com compared to Wi-Fi actually has helped 8.11 industry to move forward. 
And so probably in the afternoon, you also hear about what are the innovations we also now bring to Wi-Fi to enhance the performance there. So the consumer for both Wi-Fi and the cellular industry will win because of the technology that we introduced into the license bands. Okay. So, and, uh, so, and then uh, just a little more word on Multifire. Given LAA is now commercialized, so the question is now, where are we with Multifire in terms of commercialization? Well, so the one thing is the, the, the spec for Multifire, oops, I'm sorry, something, something. The spec for Multifire really has happened. Basically, we actually have the Multifire 1.0 spec being released just last month. Uh, and, uh, and now we ex we're anticipating, basically, there'll be some lab and OTA testing in this year and a trial quality in early 2018. And if there are commercial interests, the product will follow afterwards. So that's a timeline that we're looking. So it's after LAA, it is a multifier. And from uh, demonstrate from, the, from basically the technology feasibility and the maturity perspective, this afternoon, you are going to see uh, world's first multifier over the air multi-site deployment here on our campus. We have four different nodes, and we have a van that's driving through them with seamless handover and mobility across, and you're also going to see a coverage comparison for Multifire against 802.11 AC. So that is something that you'll see this afternoon, and I'll try to show you that. And then on top of that, we're also trying to say, okay, now, we also want to strive for industry partnership as well, not just for the unlicensed band, but also for shared spectrum in 3.5 gigahertz. So right now we are partnering, not, we're not just building a demonstration site here in, in, in Qualcomm campus, we also try to build a demonstration site together with partners. So one example here is we're partnering with um, GE and Nokia, really is for kind of the industry IoT um, in, some of the port, in some of the port to really demonstrate the quality and reliability of technology for LTE to operate in 3.5 gigahertz, and later on the multifire will follow when the, when the, when the product is available. So now, we, we, so we talk about all of that, that's really just all about LTE still. So the more excitement will even happen for 5G because through the process of developing LTE for unlicensed and a shared spectrum, we have learned so much, and we're now going to apply all of that learning and knowledge to 5G. And so basically, the version, so how the shared and unlicensed spectrum for 5G will be used, actually, from nominal forms, will be similar to LTE. You're going to have like NR-based LAA. You're going to have the multiple connectivity with Wi-Fi as well for 5G and Wi-Fi, the multi-connectivity. And you're going to have the multiple tier of sharing, just like what, C, what LSA and CBRS does to protect the legacy incumbents in shared spectrums. And we're going to have NR-based standalone operating in unlicensed spectrum or shared spectrum, NR-based type of, of multifier. So that will all be there. But there'll be something that's more that we're trying to enhance, and I'll try to give you a little bit of the idea. Uh, we're still developing technology, so what you see today is really some of the latest things that we're looking at. Okay. So clearly, traditionally, I think what happens is um, if we want to take 5G NR, to operate in an unlicensed band, you know, which there will be Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, many other things going on. Again, just like LTE, LAA does or Multifire does, we have to go in the band and perform listen before talk and share everything with um, other traffic close by. So by the nature of that, of that band, the, the, the access to the channel there will be what we call asynchronous. So you won't be like um, in the licensed network, everything's purely being synchronized or very aligned. No, everything will be asynchronous. So we're developing techniques for 5G NR such that in this asynchronous you know, environment, it will be even more efficient than Multifire. And uh, by doing the better listen before talk and the much better kind of um, you know, way to get rid of the hidden nodes. So that's one way we're looking at. The second thing that we're looking at is also now if we move into a, some kind of shared spectrum where basically there's no legacy, no kind of the legacy um, waveform like Wi-Fi or, or Bluetooth, everything can be done in a green field type of way. Although it's like CBRS honestly today is like that. Of course, everyone trying to do LTTDD, so we, we have to be, be other bands beyond that. But CBRS, just like CBRS today, we only have legacy incumbents we have to protect, but then when you get to the lower tier, you have a green field to define the rules. Then how do you really make the access rules to be better, to be more friendly? Well, one thing we can say is we can leverage 
the cell, the synchronized type of nature of a cellular type of network, we can deploy the network, allow the different operating entities to be synchronized. That in that way, basically one key issue, one key problem in this kind of unlicensed shared spectrum is when the network gets very crowded, no one has a guarantee of QS. But now if I make everything to be synchronized, you could actually enable somebody to really get a minimum level of service guarantee over there. And, uh, and so basically, you can do, do certain partitions. And the other thing, though, is the issue with traditional fixed partition is that in this kind of environment, no one really gets um, their, uh, the, they're only being constrained to operate in their time. So when this guy's not using their spectrum, you don't get to use it. But now, once you have listened before talk, when the others are not using it, you could actually sense the channel and use the channel more efficiently. So that's kind of a rough idea on how really you're looking at we can make the 5G spectrum share even more efficiently. So when we come down to the performance wise, so here, so this picture is really important. I want to kind of um, get everyone look at the picture. Now, if I have a piece of spectrum, I have multiple choices. I could actually slice it up, like in, in the 3.5 gigahertz share spectrum, I could slice up and give it one chunk, assign one chunk to each operating type of the entity. So in here, we have an example that we have a, you know, a chunk of spectrum. We divide it to two operators. Each one gets half. So that's what we call static FDM. So everyone gets their share. Or we can let everyone, we can do the uncoordinated way that everyone goes in, does listen before talk, and try to really kind of um, just uh, take the share that's getting the channel access very randomly, okay? So from that perspective, when the network loading is very low, then because most of the other guys, the guys are not, whenever you access the other guy's spectrum, the, the end corner you can also use, so you, you, so you actually have a better user experience compared to static FDM. But when the network load gets very high, then the static FDM is actually better because it preserves the QS for the user. That's why the cell network today has a better quality because it preserves QS even in the very dense type of the network, okay? So that's really the trade-off that we have with the unlicensed band approach and the licensed band approach today. So, so that was the purple curve and green curve. Now with the 5NR spectrum sharing, our goal is to really, with some kind of coordination and synchronization, we could actually get better performance and envelope for both the green and the purple gets a little bit better. So you get better utilization when the network is low, so the user gets higher peak rate, and yet you can guarantee a better user throughput or certain level QS when the network load is high. And given the network start to be coordinated now, then once everybody, all the nodes start to share, quad even, even more tightly, like doing network MIMOs and things like that, you could actually even achieve a much higher performance. So that's really kind of the technology roadmap we're developing for shared spectrum and unlicensed spectrum. And really our hope is basically to say, hey, you know what? To bring this technology from another concept and evaluation through the same prototype that, that Matt and John has mentioned, we're building on top of that to really bring this to trial, hopefully sometimes in 2018. And from the perspective of that, we also want to make a picture to say that whenever, wherever, there's a, there, there's a need for more spectrum and there's a potential shared spectrum or the unlicensed spectrum to be used or utilized, Qualcomm will be, will be there in the first place at, at the first time to make that feasible and to bring the benefit to the consumers. So that's basically the message on the shared and analysis spectrum. Please ask. So, 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 so,